Hello folks, Dustin Zarni here, Democratic Elections Commissioner, Onondaga County, and uh, this is a special commissioner in the car. It's a post-primary update. Uh, my content schedule always gets interrupted by, oh, I don't know, elections, <laughs> which is my main job, of course. Uh, uh, so uh, I wanted to, um, I didn't have a Zoom with Zarni uh, done for this week. Uh, those will resume next week or the week after. Uh, but uh, since next week is a holiday week, we'll see if I can get a Zoom with Zarni in uh, next week. Um, and my weekly wants uh, were paused this last weekend. I think I might have something this weekend, um, but uh, uh, we'll see if I have enough time <laughs> to get it done. But so I'm, I'm bringing you an extra commissioner in a car to kind of wrap up the primary that happened on Tuesday. That's right. The primary was just Tuesday. It seems like three weeks ago for me, but uh, it was only three days ago. And uh, it, it, for those of you who don't remember, <laughs> but I'll recap what happened on primary night. Uh, John Mannion easily won his primary for uh, U.S. Congress. He will be the Democratic and Working Families Party nominee to go against Brandon Williams, who's the Republican and Conservative nominee. Uh, Caleb Slater uh, won the Republican nominee for Senate District 48. Uh, he will be the Republican nominee to go against Rachel May, who's the Working Families and Democratic nominee and the incumbent Senator. And Chris Ryan won the Democratic nomination for Senate District 50, which was John Mannion's old district. And um, that will be, uh, uh, he will be the Democratic and Working Families representative running against Nick Paro, who is uh, current town supervisor for the town of Salina and running for Senate. Uh, in there, and he's on the Republican and uh, conservative lines. So those three races were the big races, and they were the races that were decided on Tuesday night. Uh, obviously, the election's not certified, but the margins on all of those races are well outside the bounds of even getting close to uh, having a hand count or within the absentee ballot margins. Uh, so it's safe to call them the presumptive winners. There are some races that uh, are uh, too close to call at this point, mainly because they're going to go to a hand count. Not because I believe the lead will change, but mainly because they're going to go to a hand count. And when, when something is going to go to a hand count, I believe it is, uh, it is not right to actually call the race by the media or by the candidates. And um, there are the Lysander Town Republicans. Uh, are having a Republican caucus or Republican nomination for the two fill vacancy for the town board. Um, 16 votes separate the candidates. Only three or so absentees are in um, for that race uh, in Lysander. Um, so the, it's not likely that on Tuesday when we scan the absentees and vote by mail again, that there there will be a lead change. However, because it's under 20 votes, um, there will be uh, uh, a hand count after we certify the election. And I'll go into that in a little bit. We then have five um, different county committee races. Uh, there's a, a county committee race in Lysander. There's uh, and then there's uh, four county committee races in Salina. The county committee race in Lysander is a Republican county committee race. Uh, there's an interesting thing going on there. Uh, the person leading, who will be one of the two county committee members, is leading by about eight votes. And there is a married couple who were the committee members who both have seven votes uh, for second place. Um, and I'll go into that what that means in a little bit because that might be the subject of my weekly walk this weekend uh and then uh there are uh there actually are five so uh conservative committee mem uh, races but one of them the lafayette one uh has zero votes uh not even the people who ran for 
that showed up to vote on, on in the election. So with zero votes, um, that's something special too. So I'm going to hold on to that. We're going to talk about that with the Lysander one. The other four races that are in uh, Salina conservative committee member races, they're all within 20 votes. Um, and uh, we'll see if any lead changes with the absentees. I doubt it. Uh, there's only three absentees for conservatives countywide that are yet to be counted. Um, so we'll see how that happens on Tuesday. But all of those races will go to a hand count. So on Tuesday, we'll do the scan. On Friday the 5th, we will certify the election where we uh, uh, actually certify the election and then proceed to the hand count. Uh, we will... And, and, and if there's a change in the race, then we have to recertify uh, any of the changes. So the hand count will start on Tuesday, July 9th, and we will hand count the Lysander Town Board race, the Lysander Republican Committee race, and those uh, four Salina Conservative uh, Committee races. Now, people always ask, what happens if there's a tie? Um, and every race has different rules, but in the case of county committees, uh, if there is a tie, that means the it becomes a vacant spot. So let's take that Lysander Republican Committee where you have somebody who has 15 votes, they're going to win, and uh, there are two people who have seven votes. If no absentees come in that will change the totals, and the hand count doesn't change the totals, then um, in, in the, in the second and third place person still remains tied. That means that second position in Lysander uh, Republican Committee becomes vacant. Uh, and uh, then the, the Republican County Committee can put in a replacement for that at their next reorganizational meeting in September. So that's one. Uh, but what happens to that Lafayette County Committee race that is a conservative county committee race that has zero votes? Same thing. Um, there are no ballots out there that have been issued. There is no requested to vote by mail. No affidavit ballots. It is uh, done. Uh, it will remain at zero. Uh, and there's an interesting story to tell on that. So stay tuned to my next weekly one because I think you're going to... Um, I think you're gonna like that. <laughs> so, wait for that, and uh, you will uh, you'll see. It's uh, it's an interesting story. Why did we have a race that no one showed up to? It's a good question. Um, but stay tuned. Uh, I'm still researching some stuff, but I'm hoping to have that out this weekend. So then, uh, so we have about uh, about 500 or so vote by mail ballots that have been returned to us that are timely and will be these were vote by mail ballots that came in after Sunday uh, June 23rd so they were not part of the uh, scan uh, on the Monday before election day and not part of the election night totals and then we have another hundred or so affidavit ballots these are ballots that people showed up at the polls either during early voting or election day they had moved or something like that and uh, we had to research those ballots to make sure that uh, they were allowed to actually vote and they will be part. So all of these ballots, the, the vote by mail ballots and the affidavit ballots will be part of our final scan, which will be Tuesday, July 2nd. We will release those totals uh, on our website. It'll be, we'll update the unofficial totals so people will see. Then once we certify that uh, race on July 5th, we then move on to the hand count on July 9th. It probably only take us a day. The Lysander Town Committee is uh, um, 500 or so ballots. We've done 90,000 ballots in the, in the past. That's going to take us a day. It's going to be done along with the county committees. And then we'll recertify uh, either the next day or the day after. Um, and then uh, any races that wish to go to court would have 72 hours to go to court to challenge any rulings that we might have. So that is what's happening in uh, for the post-election process. On Tuesday night, 
on uh, July 2nd, I will do another commissioner in car to kind of update you what uh, happened with those scans, what races are definitely going to the hand count. They all are the ones that I listed and uh, in, in the next process there. Um, so that's really all I got to bring to you election wise. Uh, and uh, we're soon to move on to the general election. Uh, so I know there was a debate last night. Uh, I know there's a lot of reaction to that online. I, I posted my reactions to that. And I can't, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that that was a good debate for Joe Biden. It was not. It was not a good debate for Donald Trump either, though. And fa failing for a knockout blow uh, this early in the election does not necessarily mean the election is over. Uh, that being said, the work for Democrats got harder. Uh, that's definitely true. There's no denying that. Uh, Joe Biden can still win. Donald Trump can still win. Absolutely, he can win. Uh, so it's important that uh, <clears throat> people go out and make their choices. John Mannion will be the nominee for Congress. He can absolutely win this seat. Uh, Brandon Williams is the incumbent. He can absolutely defend this seat. We have a lot of close races coming our way. Chris Ryan for Senate District 50 can absolutely win that seat. And so can Nick Parle who, uh, as we saw, that seat went to 10 votes in 2022. Different candidates, different year, higher turnout for presidential year than a midterm year. Uh, maybe a better Democratic tur uh, turnout considering it's a presidential election, but maybe not. We really don't know. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we just don't know what the election is going to bring. Uh, it's about four months until uh, Election Day um, and uh, a little over. For, but and if uh, you know we just won't know how this all turns out uh, the only thing to go forward is and I, again I know there's a lot of speculation about whether Biden should be replaced on the ticket and I think some of that has been camped out today with his performance at the North Carolina rally but uh, it's okay to have that speculation it's okay to uh, raise those questions the odds of that happening electorally is very, very slim. The convention is uh, 41 days away, uh, and once that convention happens, everything's cemented. And even if something changed at the convention, there are going to be some states where that deadline has already passed unless um, somebody dies. Uh, you know, so that is a, uh, there are real questions about whether a change can be made at this point. Uh, if you're a Democrat, I think your best bet is to get behind Biden and 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 move forward. Uh, there's not much that you or I can do to change. Uh, you know, there was a primary. He won his primary. He is the sitting president. And his polling numbers are, while not great, not bad. You know, he's either tied or ahead in most of the national polls. Uh, that may fluctuate after this, the last performance, but... Donald Trump did himself no favors either. And some of the focus groups that came out in CNN and MSNBC, uh, the people who were undecided going into the debate tended to go to Biden after the debate in these focus groups. Um, we'll see if those hold. Um, all I can say is that it's a long, long election season. And uh, I believe the choice will be Biden versus Trump. A well-meaning old man who's lost a step who has trouble in a debate setting but is fiery and still fine in the Oval Office accomplishing a lot of things and uh, having a competent and professional staff around him and the other choice is Donald Trump who nearly destroyed our country when he was president had a horrible staff will have even a worse staff has a Project 2025 that is uh boasting about the end of democracy uh, in it and the end of a lot of our freedoms. And those are going to be the choices uh, come November. I know it's not ideal, but I, I just don't believe it's going to be any different. Uh, and uh, that, that being said, as soon as I say something like that, 
you know, something might change. So, uh, uh, stay tuned. All right, that's all I got for you. This weekend, I plan on doing a weekly wonk, uh, diving into some weird things that I saw in the presidential primary election and kind of doing a wrap up. And then, uh, Zoom Bizarre will start resume next week. I just don't have a guest lined up right yet. Um, and a commissioner in card next Tuesday, uh, which will be the unofficial absentee vote by mail affidavit ballots that have not yet been counted. And then we'll have totals. That's all I got for you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Go to DustinZardy.com and you can subscribe and get a notification for any time uh, uh, I post content or election news updates. Take care. Bye-bye.